Well, fine good afternoon everyone. This is Patricia and I am traveling for history. I know the sun setting right there is probably blinding you as much as it's blinding me, but uh, I guess if I have to suffer, so do you. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's real nice of me. Anyway, before I start talking about the topic at hand, I did see this for the first time ever and uh, thought I would share this with you. It says dedicated to Champ, and that of course is Champ right there. Its Latin name, Bellua Aquatica. Oh, hang on for a moment for this last word. Champlainiensis. Wow, not very good. And those people in Vermont who have cited Champ and are in search of Champ. So apparently produced by Rock of Ages and paid for by the Vermont Lottery. Could have been provided by Rock of Ages. June 29, 1984. I'm guessing that's the dedication date. Never seen this before. So if you've heard of the Loch Ness Monster, Champ is supposed to be Vermont's answer to that. All right. Now, uh, as I move closer to film the uh, topic at hand, I wanted to thank you for your patience. Uh, I've had book recommendation, a book recommendation up and a, a review of the rig I use for my uh, YouTube recordings. In fact, I'm using it right now. And I know those things aren't as popular as, say, buildings, for instance. But uh, I had a slip and fall accident on Friday. I did record two videos on Friday of the snowstorm Oakley. But uh, I had a slip and fall. Boy, did that hurt. Oh, that's, that really hurt. It still hurts, actually. So uh, I couldn't do anything over the weekend. I was just kind of stuck at home, wallowing in my, my uh, self-pity on uh, slipping and falling. And of course, oh, the, just the pain of that. So uh, this is my first day out again. So I appreciate your uh, patience before I could get back out to uh, record for you again. Now, if you're enjoying my my uh, videos, I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. It's free. Yay. And as of February 28th, last day of February in uh, 2022, I'm still uploading every day of the week. Yay. Even though today is a frozen tundra, good God, it's cold out here. We, we can see, this is like Champlain in front of us, this waterway, this body of water. I can't tell because it's frozen, but uh, anyway. Um, 140 subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And I look forward to providing some more videos that you love and want to watch over and over and over again. And share with your friends, your family. Share the ones you don't like with people you don't like. Did I say that aloud? I did. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along to the topic at hand, which is the breakwater, which is right out here. And uh, let me zoom in. It's hard to see, admittedly. But that line you see right there that uh, stretches all the way, all the way farther down. We can't even see the end. I can't see the end from here. Where it culminates, there's a there's a lighthouse down there. And if I zoom in all the way, you may be able to see that lighthouse right here. That's one lighthouse, a modern lighthouse, and the other one is down on this end. And we can see it right there that's not i know that's very blurry uh, but it's a digital zoom okay so let's talk about the breakwater i have uh, two sources for you i think you'll like both of them burlington breakwater the burlington breakwater is a breakwater providing shelter to the harbor of burlington vermont from the open waters of lake champlain it was built in several stages between 1836 and 1890 and is a rare example of a 19th century timber cribbed stone breakwater and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2003. The harbor of Burlington, Vermont is located near the center of Burlington Bay, which extends from Apple Tree Point in the north, that way is the north to my right, to the north of Shelburne Point in the south, and south is to my left. 
set off from the city's port area. The Burlington Breakwater shelters that area from the broad waters of Lake Champlain to the west. West is across from us. The Adirondacks right across from us there. The breakwater consists of a main section, 3,793 feet, or 1,156 meters, in length, with a 364-foot, or 111-meter section to the north. Well, this is north anyway. Separated by a channel 200 feet, or 61 meters wide. The structure has seven legs laid out in a zigzag pattern, laid out to roughly follow the contour of the shoreline. Its visible portions are covered by a variety of stone materials. Its underwater structure consists of timber cribs, most laid on a rubble foundation that are filled with rubble stone. The cribs are hemlock at the lower levels and white pine at the upper levels and are joined by notched corners. Most of the upper levels of the cribbing have been replaced by stone because of subsequent rotting. The lake-facing side of the breakwater was largely faced in riprap in 1961. The ends of the breakwater are marked by modern lights. I showed you those lights already. The oldest portion of the breakwater, about 1,000 feet or 300 mile, uh, meters long, was built between 1836 and 1854 and consists of the middle sections of the present structure. It was built as part of a program by the Federal War Department to improve shelter for the major port facilities on Lake Champlain. Near the breakwater's southern end lies the shipwrecked General Butler, which struck the breakwater during a, a storm in 1876 and sank, its passengers and crew reaching safety on the breakwater before she sank. It is now a popular dive site. Now my second source for this, Burlington Breakwater, a prime example of 19th century timber crib construction, is located in the city of Burlington, Vermont. It was constructed to ease the increased commercial traffic on Lake Champlain, a major commercial artery in Vermont during the 18th century. The construction of this 4,135 foot structure began in 1836. The breakwater contributed to the development of the city and its waterway trade as planned. The repair and maintenance of the breakwater is carried out by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The breakwater extends from north to south along the waterfront. The underwater investigations carried out by the Corps have revealed that the main method employed was the use of a wooden crib on a stone or rubble base with a stone cap. The first V-shaped section of the breakwater was completed in 1854, and it was expanded in accordance with the increase in trade and traffic at Burlington's waterfront. The late 1880s and 1890s witnessed many appropriations directed toward repairing the old superstructure, intending to protect the structure northward and southward. In 1890, a superstructure made wholly of stone was tested on the 360-foot new construction north of the 200-foot opening. That would be this way again. This method proved a constructive one, and soon the whole aging timber structure was replaced by stone. Repair work was continued by the Corps in 2001 and 2002 when they removed portions of damaged cribbing, applying a layer of core stone and armoring the core stones with capstones. The Burlington Breakwater was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in June 2003. And I'll have all of what I just read on my website, travelingforhistory.com or .org will get you there. Pretty interesting thing, stuff. Something else you may or may not know about the Burlington Breakwater is that there used to be a lighthouse sitting in the dead center of it before there were lights on either end. Manned by a, by a lighthouse keeper. Thing is with that house, it was sent to Burlington, Vermont by accident. And when, uh, and when the um, government, the federal government demanded it back, the uh, Burlington City Father said, ha ha, nope. It's ours. You can't have it back. Na 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 na. Well, maybe they didn't say the last part of that, but anyway, it remained on the uh, on the breakwater for several years. It was moved, though. It is still standing, and it's in Burlington, Vermont. And at some point, I will um, film it for you. But uh, anyway, just wanted to talk about the Burlington Breakwater today. I think it's really one of those very interesting things. I, I read years ago, and I don't know where. Uh, it's been so, 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 so long. But um, apparently, the uh, P 
people who were deciding on which side this uh, breakwater would be knew that whichever side got the breakwater of either Burlington or Plattsburgh, which is across the lake there, that that would be the more prosperous side. Interesting, isn't it? Anyhow, thanks so much for watching my video today. Really appreciate it. This is Patricia, and I'm traveling for history. Until I see you tomorrow, you have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.